Hi, I'm Daniel Fastenau. I am the head brewer and distiller here at Tipsy Tribe Brewery and Distillery in Kuckelberg. Um, you started the brewery with? Started the brewery with my lovely wife, Eileen. Uh, we both do a bit of everything in the brewery. Uh, I do head production and a lot of cleaning and she does everything as well um, but she's more on the sales focus side of things uh, a bit of the marketing and everything but she also helps me when I uh, can't lift something that's too heavy for me or something. and where what's your background uh, my background originally uh, consulting uh, I did consulting in uh, IT consulting financial consulting these types of things so mostly here US? in Brussels I'm originally from the US uh, I moved here in 2001 uh, to Mons, and after that, 2003 in Brussels, and I've been in Brussels ever since. And how did you start the brewery, and what gave you the idea to join the Craft Wave? Uh, well, we wanted to start. We were originally called. Uh, we were a home brewing kind of crew. Me and a couple of friends and Eileen. We did it in our house. We started in 2015 uh, brewing. We were originally called uh, Tipsy Brewery, uh, and then. We eventually decided, uh, well, it took us a long time to really get the business plan together, decide to really take the leap. But eventually during COVID, we decided to completely change our ways. We quit both of our jobs and we went 100% into this to uh, do something that we are truly passionate about. And what are you passionate about? What's the style? Passionate about beer, passionate about spirits. Uh, we're passionate about combining the beers and the spirits to create something new and not seen before, at least in Brussels. Uh, it's uh, my styles that uh, are, are a bit more, not as traditional, more experimental in a way. For example? For example, uh, we have a Japanese IPA. Uh, it's a very, um, it's not a beer that is normally accepted by a lot of people. It's uh, it's got a little bit of rice in it that dries it up. Uh, we love IPAs. So we like to put a lot of hops at the end, a lot of hops that bring a lot of that passion fruit uh, sort of flavors out. A little bit of white wine, and nice and crisp and dry. We also really like uh, lower alcohol beers. Uh, we focus a lot more on lower alcohol sessions that type of stuff because we feel. Belgian beers are very, very strong. We feel there's definitely space for a little bit lower, especially when the sun's out like it is today. Uh, hot weather, lower alcohol is nice, um, but we like our strong stuff as well, so we'll be doing some of that in the winter. Um, we also do uh, like distinct, it's our juniper, uh, distilled juniper um, blanche, basically. So it's a 4.9% session uh, white beer that we distill juniper berries in our still and we add that essence on top of the, the beer itself. So it's kind of a way of combining spirits and spirit distillation and, uh, and uh, a beer production. So we're not just talking simple boiler makers here. No. <laughs> no, but we will do that too. <laughs> I like bullet makers. <laughs> it's actually kind of one of the ideas that we started this whole thing. We wanted to, one of my favorite drinks personally is a shot and a beer. Shot and a beer. It was kind of a classic thing that I got used to, to drinking. It's just kind of my thing. So in Nevada, uh, all over the States, any bar in the States, like they'll do that for you uh, here as well in Belgium. Like you get a shot of bourbon and you get your beer with it. So my thing is, I want to make beers that will go really, really well with our whiskey that's going to release in three years. Excellent, and yes, yeah, so uh, so what, how difficult was it to start up? You, know, you mentioned the COVID, that, that was a decision. A few other uh, Brussels breweries also started up during mm -hmm. COVID. You know, they had plans or expanded, they just kept with it. Yeah. How difficult was it and how difficult to, is it to survive or get your beers on the market? Um, so to start up, short answer, it was very difficult. Uh, we, we were coming from a background of not knowing anything about professional brewing on this scale. Um, we, were, we were consultants in various different aspects, but so it was hard. It was a bit of an uphill kind of climb at the beginning, but 
I think we managed pretty, pretty well to kind of figure everything out, learn everything along the way, make errors, make mistakes, uh, screw up a whole bunch of stuff, uh, break a whole bunch of things, uh, lose batch here and there. Uh, but then after a while, you start to get the hang of it and it starts to kind of make sense to you. So now we're in a point where things are a lot easier. Things are a lot more stable and a lot and production is excellent. So we're not having any real of the issues that we had at the beginning. But during COVID, it was more, it was a problem of we, we had to build this entire thing from scratch, basically like the inside of our building was nothing. So there was no water, no electricity, no gas. And we had to get that up to industrial level specifications over the course of a year. Uh, it took about a year and three months to get it all done. Working with contractors, working with suppliers, trying to get equipment from various countries into here during COVID restrictions, uh, ports shutting down, all that stuff happened all at the same time. So. Uh, you have a business plan and you have your, your, your time frame and we didn't do that. <laughs> we were a lot more, there was, there was more to it. So uh, there was a bit of a delay on the project. So financially that hurt, but uh, now things are kind of where they should have been about yeah, what, six months ago or something like that. And it's, it's steadily increasing. So sales are going well. Um, we have a lot of plans for the future, a little tap room kind of thing, degustation area. A um, lot of local neighborhoods support us a lot. So there's nothing like this in the north side of Brussels. And, and especially show the beer uh, label. That's the uh, support. The right? beer. <laughs> there's nothing like this in Kuckelberg. There's nothing like this in this area and uh, we are the first and only brewery distillery in Brussels so it's um, it's really an honor to, to be here and uh, to, to do what we love at the same time so you mentioned that uh, you know you're newcomers here you have no real network and now you're trying to develop like a lot of the other brewers that came out of the smaller brewers mm -hmm. here and uh, yeah. Network. I just remember when Mila was building. You know, he had to pull on some of them. Ah, this thing is stuck. Kind of yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. I we guess that was difficult <laughs> as well, right? Yeah, yeah we didn't. We didn't did have much of a support <laughs> network. We had to learn everything from scratch. So, um, I'm really good with electricity now, thankfully. Uh, I'm not certified, but I can still do it. So, 400 volt electricity doesn't scare me anymore. Gas still scares me, so I don't touch that. I will contact a guy for anything that has to do with gas installation. Uh, steam doesn't scare me anymore. I can figure that out. Um, water, no problem. So I'm a plumber and electrician by learning, basically, on site here. And it takes, it takes some time. It takes some effort. Uh, we didn't really have too many people that we could contact. Um, but the suppliers that we worked with, uh, their engineers were amazing so they helped us a lot with like glycol pipeline insulation and all that stuff uh, things that are a bit di more difficult uh, when you're just starting and here we go here is Ireland uh, who has just finished talking to some customers and uh, how are you doing and what did you feel uh, the difficulty was in starting up um, and how you overcame them as a family you have a family yes as well. well that's one of the challenges of course uh, yeah. trying to wrangle uh, little very young kids toddlers while also setting up a new business uh, uh, otherwise some of the difficulties were I don't know what Dan said but you know the learning curve coming from different sectors moving on to uh, brewing and distilling was uh, it's great it's really exciting but there's definitely a mm -hmm. learning curve yeah, the, the distilling aspect kind of came on top of the brewing. So we, we knew how to brew for at a homebrew level at the beginning, but we decided, okay, we're going to, we need to do something different. We're going to get into distilling as well. So we had to learn that from scratch as well on top of it, which was a monumental undertaking. And tell me about what you're distilling in three barrels back there. We have, um, we have whiskey, uh, Brussels first whiskey ever produced um, in one barrel. Uh, it's about 50 liters at about 58% that will be ready in about three years time. Uh, well, two years and 10 months, something like that. Um, the other stuff that we're doing, we're doing a rye next. Uh, we're doing a lot of... Um, uh, we're going to do a sour mash as well. So we're focusing mostly on kind of American style bourbon whiskeys. We can't call them bourbons because of obvious reasons, but 
those are the kind of styles that we're going for. Um, we're also aging beers on those barrels. So our idea is make the whiskey, get the whiskey out, age our strong beers. So we'll get those 10 percenters, 11 percenters, age them on our own whiskey barrels that have our whiskey in it. And it'll be a nice kind of circular sort of thing that we can keep doing. Uh, so that's the idea. More spirit productions. And then we're also doing vodka and we're also doing gin. So uh, many, many different types of gins. So the next gin is coming out here probably in about two months if uh, production schedule sticks to where it's supposed to be. But uh, uh, we're doing like craft gin where it's like craft beer, but different flavors, different styles coming out new and fresh every single time. And in the land of universe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Geneva. 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 Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, Geneva is interesting. Uh, we were thinking about doing it as well, but I think we'll stick more towards the the, the kind of gin flavors. I mean, it's a little bit less on the uh, beer side of things. Well, we're producing basically what maybe five hundred liters a week uh, of okay. beer. Um, that includes that does not include the spirit production. So we produce beer a beer before to make our spirits so that is on top of that's about like 200 uh, every two week or something like that and then um, but sometimes now we're double batching because there's quite a lot of demand for a lot of our products uh, notably uh, the kukul beer which is um, going qu pretty quick around here so we have to double batch now quite constantly on that the Kolsch as well that's uh, another one that we just double batch that'll be bottled very very soon so our production capacity is increasing uh, to the point we might have to buy some more fermenters I love this location what I do think is we can uh, um, expand much more on the distillation aspect yeah yeah, yeah. so and there is yeah there's that yeah, for sure. and, and especially because uh, there's so much synergy between brewing and distilling uh, as yeah. then uh, briefly touched upon is uh, you initially make a beer mm -hmm. to then uh, distill and turn into a spirit and in that sense we're quite unique in Brussels because we're the only brew distillery the place that does brewing and distilling under a single roof doing uh, it in from Brussels doing it from scratch as well from from the grain to the yeah. final product so like. we're, we're the only place if I'm not mistaken that has the ability uh, at this time to uh, make the alcohol itself instead of just relying on buying alcohol at 96 percent right in brussels yeah so. we um so yeah the expanding distilling operations for sure will increase capacity of that because our capacity at the moment is pretty small so it's not where we want to be um the beer production maybe a couple more fermenters but at this location it's pretty um <laughs> we're already pretty stocked yeah that's so what I was saying. <laughs> barrels barrel aging as well because we're doing the whiskey i mean we're we're going to be putting maybe 30, 40 barrels on this wall and we'll need space to store that on top of everything else. It's the location, this location is going to get uh, too small too fast. That's so, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, well, glad to hear your plans. Yeah. And thank you for talking to the Beer Idiots. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, the opportunity.